Yoo-hoo, Vivian! Still having a hard time cleaning your eyes from the hot pepper powder? <laughs> to be honest, I didn't know you're such a wonderful crowd pleaser. I'm so glad Dylan chose to marry you in the first place. Why don't you say something? Tell me, did you enjoy the dinner last night at my house? Was it good? I bet it was. Everyone was having a great time. We laughed so hard that my sides hurt. Goodness, I never thought having a daughter-in-law would bring me so much joy. Now I regret not having one sooner. How could you laugh about that? I thought we were going to have dinner just the two of us, but you invited your friends without telling me, and you even humiliated me in front of them. What are you saying, Vivian? Don't tell me you're not one of those people who actually enjoys mother-in-law and daughter-in-law dinners. Those things are just as exciting as watching paint dry. That's why I decided to spice things up a little bit and made you the center of attention. And just as I thought, you were pranked big time. I've never laughed so much in my entire life. I'm not sure what you find fun about your pranks, but I seriously don't. Come on, don't be such a Debbie Downer. I put a lot of time and effort in setting up those pranks, and all of that for what? To make the dinner more special and create a long-lasting memory for both of us as mother and daughter-in-law. Honestly, you should be thanking me for working so hard to build strong family ties with you. I could understand that you were trying to make the evening more joyful, but I didn't appreciate the pranks in any way. In fact, I felt like I was being tortured. I was constantly on edge, wondering what you were going to do next. It was really stressful and not at all enjoyable. Oh, come on, lighten up. I was just trying to have a little fun. You should have seen your face when you tried to walk with the slippers glued to the ground and almost fell flat on your face. Goodness, it was downright hilarious. <laughs> it wasn't that fun. In fact, it was quite dangerous. I could have easily fallen and been seriously injured. I'm not just talking about bruises, cuts, and scrapes. I'm also talking about bone fractures or even head injuries in the worst case scenarios. Oh, come on. Don't be such a wet blanket. Fact is, you're still here safe and sound. So what's the big deal? In the end, pranks are supposed to be funny. So why don't you just laugh it off and move on? Yeah, it's easy to say because you weren't the one who got duped. I can still see the miserable look on your face when you thought you took a bite of bread, but it was actually microwave soap. And then, the way you ran to the bathroom to vomit after taking a sip of red wine that I secretly filled with chili powder. I was laughing so hard I almost cried. I can't believe you fell for my prank so easily. Honestly, with an intellect like yours, I'm surprised you can even tie your own shoes. I'm serious about this. Those pranks could make me sick. And I don't want to end up in the hospital. Now you're exaggerating everything. I know you would spit them out. That's why you're still perfectly fine as you are right now, aren't you? So what's the problem? And what if something wrong happened to me? Are you willing to cover my medical expenses? How could you talk to your own mother-in-law in that manner? I know you're new to the family, and I wanted to make sure you felt comfortable. I thought some harmless pranks would be a fun way to break the ice. And this is how you show your gratitude? By demanding me to pay you the non-existent medical costs? I just want to make sure you understand how serious this is. I could have understood if you had pulled one or two harmless pranks, but you didn't. You went too far, and now you're trying to play it off like it was no big deal. The whole evening was about me enduring a series of tortures. I thought I could escape that disastrous dinner by driving home, but you had other plans. You stuck a potato in the tailpipe, which smothered the engine of my car. Oops, I almost forgot about that part. My bad. <laughs> oh, my dear. Don't forget to pick up your car from my house. I'm not running a car park, you know. I'll be charging you for every hour you leave it here. What? You were the one who caused me all that trouble. And now you're asking me to pay for leaving my car at your house? What kind of logic is that? Just kidding, honey. See? You're always so tense and serious that you're easily triggered by just some harmless jokes. I bet no one would want to invite you to parties because you would literally suck all the fun out of it. You know what? My friends were so impressed by the way I educate my daughter-in-law that they even asked me for advice. What do you mean, educate? I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I was raised by my parents to know right from wrong. I'm an adult, and I certainly don't need your education. 
What's with the attitude? You're new to my family, so of course you have to learn to live by my rules. You can't just walk in our house like you're the boss and claim your territory. You must learn to know your place and know who's in charge of the household, and it's me. So all of that was just a power play to assert your dominance over me, right? Of course not. Like I said, I just wanted us to get along and have a good time together. Why do you have to make it so difficult? I'm not sure how playing brutal pranks that could potentially harm my physical and emotional health is supposed to help me get along with anyone. If this is your idea of helping, then you can keep it to yourself. I'm done. <sighs> Are you really that clueless about my family? I mean, come on. You don't know anything about us, and what is there to know about your family? Look, it's a tradition in our family for the mother-in-law to play pranks on the daughter-in-law or son-in-law on their first dinner after the wedding. This tradition has been passed down for generations from my great-grandmother to my grandmother to me. Our family tradition is a unique part of our identity, and it helps bring us closer together. I believe it's important to uphold our traditions, even if they're not for everyone. What kind of tradition is that? I've never heard of anything like that. And why do you have to know about it for it to exist? Our family tradition has been going on for centuries. We're not going to stop just because you're new. Don't think that you'll become part of our family just by marrying Dylan. If you want to fit in, you'd better get used to these kinds of pranks. I'm sure you wouldn't want to be excluded from the rest of us, right? I'm sorry, but this is just plain stupid. I'm not going to let myself be held up to derision just to fit in. Oh, well that's just a typical excuse of a weakling. Well, if you can't get along with me, it only makes a good reason for my son to find a better wife to replace a crybaby like you. You're just unreasonable. I'm going to talk to Dylan and clear everything out with him. Are you there? There's something we need to talk about. And what is that? I'm busy at the moment, so just hurry up. I had dinner with your mom yesterday, and it was the most excruciating experience of my life. Why? What happened? I don't know where she got all those ideas, but she rubbed hot pepper powder on the doorknob, glued my slippers to the floor, made microwave soap that looked like bread, and even put a potato in my car's tailpipe. She said these pranks were to help me fit in, but I think she's just trying to be mean. I thought we were having a private dinner, but your mom invited her friends over and they all laughed at me. I suppose she did that on purpose to humiliate me. What? My mom did all of that to you? Are you sure? Yes, she did. And she didn't even have the decency to apologize. I mean, I've always known that my mom has a great sense of humor. But I didn't know she would go to such lengths to prank her own daughter-in-law. Oh my god, I can already see the look of pure disgust on your face as you took a bite of that microwave soap bread. I bet it tasted chef's kiss awful. I'm definitely going to have to borrow some of her ideas for my next prank war with my colleagues. This is gonna be epic, no kidding. Riley is, without a doubt, the coolest mom in the world. Woohoo! Way to go, mom! What is this? Don't tell me that you feel okay with me being tortured by your mom's terrible pranks. They could have long-lasting consequences on my health. Are you aware of that? <laughs> what? Are you seriously kidding me right now, Vivian? Tell me, are you a newborn baby? Or are you just a weakling who can't stand these harmless pranks? Come on, get a grip. These pranks are just fun and games. If you're just going to cry about everything, why on earth did you even get married in the first place? You might just go back to your little nursery and let your mommy and daddy change your diaper for you. I'm sure they'd love to have you back in their care, since you're obviously not capable of facing the real world. Dylan, what is wrong with you? I came to you for support, and you're just making me feel worse. I thought you were supposed to be on my side, but now you're just siding with your mother and treating me like I'm the one who made a mistake. How can you be so cold and uncaring? I thought I knew you, but I guess I was wrong. Oh, of course, it's me who has something wrong going on. I'm the one who's stupid enough to marry such a weakling like you. I mean, who would have thought that I would end up with someone so pathetic? You always make it seem like you're tough and independent, but in reality, you're just a delicate little snowflake and everyone knows it. I bet you're the type who needs her parents to wipe her tears after she gets a boo-boo. Leave my parents out of this. This is between you and me. Look. If you keep talking like this to me, I'm going to make you regret it. I'm warning you, I'm not someone to be trifled with. Oh, please do tell. I'm dying to know what you're going to do. I'm sure it's something really impressive. Maybe you'll go running to your mommy and daddy and cry to them about how mean your husband and mother-in-law are to you. I can imagine you now sobbing and wailing. Mommy, daddy, they're killing me with words. Please, you have to do something. 
I'm a delicate little snowflake, and I could literally die. Oh, the humanity. I'm laughing so hard that my sides are starting to hurt. Now I see that you're this kind of person, huh? You're just like your mother. You're both bullies and liars. I regret ever getting involved with you. What do you mean by liars? What are you babbling about? Your mom is full of it. She made up that ridiculous excuse about your family having a tradition by pranking the daughter-in-law on the first dinner after she gets married to the husband. I don't believe her for a second that this is a real tradition. It's just a lame excuse for your mom to justify her ill-mannered behaviors. Now you even dare to accuse my mother of being a liar? That's a serious accusation, and you have no proof to back it up. You're insulting my mother, and you're doing it without any justification. You have any idea how terrible the consequences of your actions would be? If you spread these lies, it could literally ruin my mother's reputation. I'm warning you, if you don't stop this right now, I'm going to take legal action. You must be kidding me. Fine. If you want me to believe your mom, then prove it to me. Show me some evidence that she's telling the truth. I'm not just going to take your word for it. I've heard too many lies from your mom to believe anything she says without proof. Don't you dare question my mom's honesty. She's the most genuine person on earth, and she would never lie to anyone. If you think she's lying, then you're the one who's lying. You're trying to take advantage of her kindness, and I won't let you get away with it. Either you go apologize to my mom right now, or I'm going to make you do it myself, and you won't like the way I do it. You know what? I'm not going to let you or your mom bully me anymore. I'm filing for divorce, and I'm taking my child with me. I'm not going to waste my time with someone who is so attached to their mother. I need a partner who is independent and can stand up for themselves. I'm glad I finally figured out your true self, and I'm not going to regret leaving you. What? You're having a child? That's impossible. Are they mine? I know. You're just lying to me to make my mom look like the bad guy, while you play the role of an innocent wife. Huh. I already figured it all out. Don't think I'm easily fooled by your little deception. Now you're denying your own child to blindly defend your mom? You're just hopeless. Goodbye, Dylan. I hope you and your mom can find happiness together, but I won't be a part of it. Yoo-hoo! Vivian, is everything good? Who are you? And why do you have my number? What are you saying? It's me, your mother-in-law, Riley. You? Why are you showing up? We have nothing to say to each other anymore. Oh, come on. Is this how you greet your ex-mother-in-law? Well, excuse me for trying to be nice. I didn't realize you were so eager to cut me out of your life. I just wanted to see how you were doing. I thought we could be civil, even if we're not family anymore. But I guess I was wrong. You're still as petty and vindictive as ever. Ex-mother-in-law? Don't even joke about that. You were never a mother to me, and you were one of the reasons why Dylan and I split up. How dare you show up and talk to me again? I thought I made it clear that I never want to speak to you again. Me? You were the one who demanded a divorce. So why shift the blame onto me now? But enough about the old story. How are you and your baby? It must be difficult handling everything all by yourself while being pregnant. My kid... I... I don't want to talk about it. What? What happened? Something wrong? I... I already lost my child. I couldn't keep them. It happened so all of a sudden. You lost your child? How could you be so careless? Well, it's understandable. After all, you're just a weakling who could never do anything right. You're not suitable to be a wife or a mother, and my son's future would have been ruined if you had stayed married. It's a good thing that you and Dylan got divorced. Now he can finally have a chance at a real future without a childless wife like you dragging him down. Why are you saying these things to me? It wasn't my fault. I was walking down the street when some kids started targeting me with their water guns. I was so surprised that I didn't see a car coming. I was hit by the car and lost consciousness. When I woke up, they told me that I had lost my child. What? That's the most ridiculous and absurd reason for a miscarriage I've ever heard. Thank God my son dumped you, or else he'd be dealing with an infertile wife by now. Infertile? What are you talking about? You've already passed the age of 35, so you probably don't have any eggs left. And if you do, I'm sure they're bad eggs anyway. Now you even got a miscarriage? 
What a useless woman. It was your own stupidity that cost you your child. If you don't remarry soon, you'll never be able to have a child. And you'll be left alone for the rest of your life and die in solitary. <laughs> On the contrary, I will find Dylan a much younger and prettier wife than you. An actually healthy and fertile wife who will give my son beautiful kids and a happy life that he always deserves. How could you laugh and say those cruel words about my miscarriage? Is there any humanity left in you? You know I was strongly opposed to the idea of Dylan marrying you. A worthless woman who's past her prime now. Don't think I'm just talking about your plain-looking face and fat body. I'm also referring to your charming personality that everyone loves. I mean, who wouldn't be drawn to your negativity, your self-absorption, and your general lack of awareness of how your behavior affects others? You're a real catch, and I'm sure everyone is lining up to date you. <laughs> Are you describing yourself? Thank goodness my son got rid of you. If not, I would have had to take matters into my own hands and sign the divorce papers for him. My son is a wise man, and he made a mistake when he chose to marry you. But everything is good now. Need I remind you that I was the one who demanded a divorce, not your son? He begged and harassed me to come back to him, calling me countless times, showing up at my house uninvited, even following me into my workplace. But you know what? I made up my mind and said no, and I meant it. I don't want anything to do with a mommy's boy, and I especially don't want to deal with his toxic mother. Oh, please. Next time, if you plan to lie about something, remember to make it more convincing. There's no way a proud man such as my son would lower himself and beg for you to come back. Things like that only happen in your dreams. Well, looks like someone is too busy grieving about the loss of their child to think straight. Or maybe they're just being a drama queen. But hey... On second thought, it turns out to be a blessing in disguise now that you've lost your child. It means Dylan doesn't have to pay for child support. Such good riddance. I can't believe that you're actually thrilled after knowing that you've lost your grandchild. How much more cold-blooded can you become? You know what? It's actually a good thing that I was able to escape Mama's boy Dylan and Monster-in-law Riley, or else I'll be tortured to death by both of you. Oh, poor little Vivian. She's so angry, but there's nothing she can do about it. She can't even punch back because she's too pathetic. All she can do is cry herself to sleep every night or punch some pillows. How sad. You! If you don't have anything nice to say to me, then I suggest you get out of my life for good. I don't want to speak to you, and I don't want to see your face anywhere, and I don't want to have any association with you or your family. Ring a ring a rosies, Vivian lost her baby, now she's infertile. <laughs> what a worthless woman. Damaged goods, to be precise. I don't know why Dylan chose you to begin with. He certainly dodged a huge bullet when he decided to divorce you. Consider yourself lucky the child is a goner now. Otherwise, they will grow up and become a snowflake just like their mom. Children like that are no good to the people around them and to society. And they should never be born. You're crazy! People like you will never have a good ending in life. I can guarantee that. Oh, you're threatening me now? How cute. Your threats are so weak and pathetic, they make me want to laugh in your face. It's clear you're trying so hard to stand up for yourself, but you're failing miserably. But that's okay, honey. At least you tried. Anyways, no time for chit-chat. I have other important things to tend to, such as cooking my son nice meals and finding him a new wife, perhaps. Enjoy doing everything on your own, Miss Bad Eggs. <laughs> Me and Dylan are gonna enjoy the best time of our lives and prepare ourselves for my son eventually has a child. Riley! I know what you did. I know everything. Don't try to fool me anymore, you monster. Oh, joy of joys. Miss Bad Eggs has graced me with her presence once again. How delightful. I'm sure she's just here to spread some of her trademark bad vibes and make my life a living hell. How quaint. Oh, please do tell me what's so important this time. Have the doctors finally given up on your hopes of having a baby? Or have you finally managed to trap a rich old man into marrying you? You were the one who killed my child, you evil two-faced snake! 
You took away my precious child, and I won't let you get away with this so easily. What are you bluffing about? Are you daydreaming again? Oh, of course. You're so devastated by the loss of your child that you've turned to alcohol to numb the pain. And now you're so drunk that you can't even form a coherent sentence. How tragic. Looks like you're living a miserable life just like you always deserve. Congratulations. What can I say? I'm so happy for you. Don't you dare play dumb anymore. You paid the kids to shoot me with their water guns and made me get hit by a car. It was you who planned all of this. It was you who intentionally and indirectly murdered my unborn child. Hold on, hold on. Vivian, have you taken the wrong medicine today? How dare you raise your voice at me? I know that both of your parents are still alive, so there's no excuse for your behavior. You're clearly uneducated and ignorant, and you have no right to accuse me of a serious crime. Where on earth did you get that idea? Good acting, but you're not fooling anyone. Dylan told me everything. You went and did that to me, then came back and bragged about it to Dylan like it was some kind of glorious feat. You told him that by making me lose my child, you'll help Dylan not only to sever all ties with me, but also to avoid paying child support. What a monster in human form! You are a creature of pure evil, and I can't believe that I once considered you my mother-in-law. Uh -huh. Dylan told you all that? Honey, look, there must be some kind of misunderstanding here. There's no way I would do such a heinous thing to my grandchild, would I? I know my son, and he must be going through a state of despair right now. He hasn't been mentally stable since the day he got divorced. And he's been making up crazy stories these days. Poor boy, he must really be sad and miss you very much. So sad that he even started having some kind of hallucination and talking nonsense. I hope you can forgive my poor boy Dylan. I promise I won't let him go out there and say things like these to you ever again. Dylan is completely normal and he's not hallucinating. Every single thing he told me is true. He even told me that he would help me testify in court. What do you mean by court? Why does it have anything to do here? Did you say it by mistake, my dear? I hope you did. You heard me, right? You, me, and Dylan are all going to court. And I can't wait to throw off your mask and expose your evil true self to everyone. Ha <laughs> ha. Don't tell me that you're being serious. You bet I am. At least Dylan still has some conscience in him. As he feels ashamed of what you did and confessed everything to me. But you, this whole time you have never shown any remorse for causing my miscarriage. In fact, you seem to take pride in it. As if it were some kind of achievement. How dare you? What is going on here? Dylan is my son, and he needs to take my side, not yours. This doesn't make any sense at all. You're bluffing to scare me, and I'm not falling for it. I'm trying to scare you. As if I had time for that. Dylan has provided me with a voice recording in which you admitted to indirectly causing the death of my unborn child. I will do everything in my power to ensure that you are punished to the fullest extent of the law. I will make sure that everyone knows what kind of monster you are. You will not be able to hide from your guilt. I'm going to make sure that you'll have plenty of time in jail to remorse and ponder upon your misdeed. While in prison, you will face the fury of your fellow inmates. They will not tolerate your behavior, and they will not hesitate to teach you a lesson or two. No, no. Please, Vivian, I admit, I did it. I did everything you just said, but it didn't mean to make you lose your baby. It was just a prank. Yes, a prank. I just wanted to pull a silly prank on you, my ex-daughter-in-law, as a way to apologize and make peace with you. I was hoping to welcome you back into me and Dylan's life. You already know our family's tradition, right? We always prank each other. It's our way to solidify our family bond. Enough with these lies. I'm not interested in hearing any of these anymore. I am pressing charges against you for your criminal actions. You will not only be going to jail, but you will also be paying me restitution for the physical and emotional damages that I have suffered and am still suffering. Do not think for a moment that you can commit a crime and then get away with it. Actions have consequences, and you will be facing your own demons in court. With Dylan's testimony against his own mother, the court ruled in my favor. 
and I finally won the case. Riley is now serving her time in jail, where a monster like her truly belongs. As I expected, a person like Riley cannot stand life in jail. She was beaten up by her fellow inmates, who were disgusted by her crime of taking the life of an unborn child. Despite feeling sorry for his mother, Dylan supported my decision to bring her misdeeds to justice. He continued to send me alimony every month to help me with my daily expenses. Dylan made the effort to meet me in person to apologize for his mother's actions against me. He also expressed his regret for not defending me from his mother, which ultimately led to our divorce. While it is gratifying to know that Dylan still has a conscience, our relationship is beyond repair. However, we have remained friends and still talk to each other occasionally. Although the process of moving on from a broken marriage is rather difficult, I am still determined to leave the past behind and look forward to a better future. It is important to learn from the painful memories, but not to dwell on them too much. I know that by surrounding myself with people I love, I will have the strength and courage to embark on a new journey of healing and self-discovery.